Hi, it's Patrick Hutzel from IntensiveCareHotline.com, where we instantly improve the lives of families of critically ill patients in intensive care, so that you can have real power, real control, and so that you can influence decision making, even if you're not a doctor or a nurse in intensive care. This is another episode of Your Questions Answered, and in this week's episode, I want to answer what I believe is one of the gold nuggets of family support in intensive care and it's also one of the biggest challenges if your loved one is critically ill in intensive care. I also believe that if you have this one nailed that you can go through the challenge of having your loved one critically ill in intensive care fine. I also know that it's a big challenge because people have asked that questions many times and I thought that I definitely needed to write this one down as it's so important and it's also w often one of the areas where intensive care units don't give you a lot of support. It's also one of those areas where you have total control and you don't need anybody else in order to fully control this one. The question I want to answer this week without keeping you waiting any longer is how to stay positive if your loved one is critically ill in intensive care. It's very easy to get caught up in the negativity and the doom and gloom that often surrounds critical illness in intensive care. Intensive care units and their medical and their nursing teams can be very quick in painting a doom and gloom and negative scenario and also a doom and gloom and negative picture if your loved one is critically ill in intensive care. They do this for a number of reasons. Number one usually is that they want to protect their professional reputation and they don't want to be seen or perceived as giving you false hope or too much hope in case things don't turn out well for your critically ill loved one. Number two, intensive care professionals, doctors and nurses have seen good situations turning bad and bad situations turning good. Therefore, the intensive care team knows that positivity can turn into negativity and negativity can turn into positivity very quickly and unexpectedly. Number three, intensive care teams know about the competing forces in an intensive care unit. Therefore, they are highly sensitive of having very sick patients in their ICU beds that may or may not get better, while at the same time there are other critically ill patients awaiting admission into intensive care and those patients in essence are all competing for limited resources. In their minds they often weigh up the pros and cons of putting resources towards this patient versus another patient. Keep this in mind at all times as it can make or break your situation. The minute you understand that the intensive care team's positioning of your critically ill loved one's diagnosis and prognosis may be based on negativity, a limited mindset or limited resources, you can counteract with positivity, asking the right questions and by not taking no for an answer. And also by simply not being afraid to speak up. These three points are extremely important for you to know and understand if your loved one is critically ill in intensive care. Because once you have understood and learned those points, you understand the positioning of the intensive care team and only then can you position, your, position yourself correctly. Now, irrespective of what's going on in a busy intensive care unit, one of the most important things is that you and your family stay positive during the time whilst your loved one is critically ill in intensive care. And you can trust me on this one. If you stay positive, it can make all the difference for you, for your sanity, for your well-being and for your critically ill loved one's recovery. You should certainly listen to what the intensive care team is telling you and your family. And you should also pay close attention to what they are not telling you. However, you should always, and I mean always, make up your own mind and read between the lines. And you should never ever lose your positivity, irrespective of what the intensive care team is telling you and irrespective of your critically ill loved one's condition. Because your positive vibes and your positive energy will directly translate to your critically ill loved one and it will also directly translate to the intensive care team. Everybody you, your family, your critically loved one and the intensive care team will feel your positive vibes 
and your positive energy. How do you do that? How can you stay positive in the face of your loved one being critically ill and in the face of adversity where other people are running the show, where other people are, are in control and where you seem to be unable to influence any decision making? The good news is that you can be strong and positive during the time that your loved one is critically ill in intensive care. Number one, eliminate negative thinking and eliminate, eliminate negative thoughts from your mind despite all the doom and gloom you hear. Number two, do your own research as, for example, there are lots of free resources available on this website here where you get maximum information if your loved one is critically ill in intensive care. And that information is instantly and directly improving your situation and you will find that by doing your own research that you have control, power and influence. Number three, eliminate mistakes that you are making that you are currently unaware of that set you off on a negative spiral. You can read about the three most dangerous mistakes that you are making but you are unaware of if your loved one is, critically, is a critically ill patient in intensive care by clicking on this link here on the blog. But what about if your critically loved one isn't getting better and in fact your loved one is dying or is slowly but surely approaching the end of life? The sad reality is that people inevitably die in intensive care. It's the minority of patients in intensive care, keep that in mind, but still it is what's happening at times. I have written two blog posts about what you need to do if your loved one is dying in intensive care, part one, and you can click on the link to read these blog posts. And I have written number two of the blog, what you need to do if your loved one is dying in intensive care. And you will get lots of free advice there, what you need to do if your loved one is approaching their end of life in intensive care. Next, be more selfish and make sure that you and your family are taken care of. I know this sounds counterintuitive, but it's very important that you are good to yourself and to your family while your loved one is critically ill in intensive care. Be more selfish if your loved one is critically ill in intensive care. And most of all, learn the hidden secrets of the things that you don't know whilst your loved one is critically ill in intensive care. This will make all the difference and it will put you directly in control and you will have power and you will be able to influence decision making because you are armed with knowledge that other families of critically ill patients in intensive care generally don't have. How do you do that? And how can you ask the right questions if you're not a doctor or a nurse? You can do that by downloading our free resources on this website and you can also download your free instant impact report now. Never forget that irrespective of what the intensive care team is telling you that you need to do your own research. It's therefore absolutely critical that you as your critically ill loved one's immediate family member directly influences decision making by having control, power and influence. You will get immediate control, power and influence if you download your free instant impact report now. In the free instant impact report you learn how to speak the secret intensive care language so that the doctors and the nurses know straight away that you are an insider and that you know and understand what's really happening in intensive care. In this free report you'll also discover how to ask the doctors and the nurses the right questions, how to eliminate fear, frustration, stress, struggle and vulnerability even if your loved one is dying, five killer tips and strategies helping you to get on the right path to control power and influence in your situation. You will get crucial behind the scenes insight so that you understand what's really happening in intensive care how you need to manage doctors and nurses in intensive care and it's not what you think. With your free instant impact report you'll also get four other free reports and the reports you will be receiving are the six questions you need to ask the most senior doctor in intensive care, ten things you didn't know doctors and nurses are talking about while you're not at the bedside with your loved one, the seven answers to the seven most frequently asked questions if your loved one is critically ill in intensive care, nine myths being a critically ill patient in intensive care. Thank you very much for tuning into this week's Your Questions Answered blog and I'll see you again in another update next week. Make sure you also check out our blog section 
For more tips and strategies, and send me an email to support at intensivecarehotline.com with your questions. This is Patrick Hutzel from intensivecarehotline.com and I'll see you again next week with another update.